Today we're taking a look at the Nokia Express Music 5310. This is a device from the past that has been revived. This is the 2020 version. And as you see, it has a couple of niceties here and there. It has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and also a micro USB charger. It's a very good device. The look and feel of the device is actually very stylish, very good. I personally enjoy uh, a lot using this device. However, there are some drawbacks, and this device is mainly for the European market. It's not made for the North American market at all. I put a SIM card and I was able to get 2G ones while I was outside testing the device. Indoors, you will probably do, will not get any kind of connectivity or calls or text messages of any kind. But there's a couple of advantages to this device. It is very basic. And also, it does have a store of some sort. Since I did not have any internet connectivity and this device has no Wi-Fi, then I was not able to test this store. But as you see, when you open the store, it does have games or at least apps, uh, things of that nature. If I were to be able to get some connectivity with 2G, maybe I'll be able to install. It does also not support the Java applications. So as far as I know, this may be Java right here, but it does not support side loading them. I tried with an SD card and things of that nature. The main feature of the device is that here it has three buttons. It has a skip button, a play and pause, and also a rewind or back button. This essentially for the music application, which you can see in here, is pretty basic. I cannot find any music right now because it doesn't have an SD card with me. Uh, it, I had to take it out for other purposes. But essentially, uh, it is very good the way that it organizes everything. Uh, it's decent. It's not going to be the greatest player with albums and playlists and things of that nature, but it will get the job done. There's no skip functions and super connectivity. It's essentially just for listening to music. But I, I enjoy listening to music on this device. It was actually very good. It does have a camera and a flash as well if you want to use that. The photos are not amazing and I wouldn't recommend using it. Um, as you will see in here, I'll just take a picture of this right here. If you take a picture, it's it's readable, as you will see right there, you can read Lumix, but it's not the most amazing camera. Uh, you will be able to use it for video, brightness, image effects, choose scene, burst mode, self-timer. It does have some customization after all, but it's not the best camera ever. So, uh, as, uh, again, it will get the job done if you really need a camera. Um, it's not going to win any awards, but it's actually pretty readable. So in my opinion, the camera is decent. It's not amazing, but it can get the job done better than most VGA cameras. Like for example, other Nokias, like the 105, the 110, it's completely better than that. It is dual SIM as well, and it does have this Facebook here, but it's just an uh, opening an Opera Mini, which again, I couldn't get to run because I don't have any connectivity in here in the United States. But it's, again, uh, very similar to the ones that we have seen in other Nokia devices. Make sure to check my reviews on that. It does have an FM radio that works without the need to plug in the 3.5 mm headphone jack. And also it has a weather application if you want to find the weather. Again, I did not get to test that, but I've seen it on other videos that it works. It has a fully functioning calendar and I like this. I believe this may be based a little bit on the Series 30, the actual Series 30, but I'm not entirely sure. But the device is actually very good. It feels good in the hand and it's very stylish, very slim, very light. And you don't feel a lot of the weight. Uh, as far as reflectivity goes, you will be able to see some of it on uh, sunlight, direct sunlight, but not a lot. So don't you know, count on it. Then you have a couple of games that you'll be able to download as well from the store if you have any connectivity. And you have uh, right there the Assassin's Creed, Asphalt 6, Doodle Jump that you'll be able to play just for a couple of things. The extras include a calendar timer, stopwatch, torch, converter, and that's about it. This is a little bit different than the other uh, system that we have been able to see, but I personally like it. You also have notes that you can take uh, this device is uh, equipped with triple click. You can also change uh, the different methodologies of texting in here with the uh, pound key. And you are also be able to change for different languages. So if you go to uh, the settings, you also have different languages that are available to you. So for example, we're gonna go and check a couple of those out. Go to phone settings, phone language. You have English, Italian, Portuguese, uh, Espanol. You have Spanish, French. Uh, German uh, and Romanish, so probably Romanian right there, uh, but it's 
uh, current form and actual forms, as you see, Deutsch right there, or Francais, Portuguese, Italiano, things of that nature. Um, you have the keyboard settings like, as well, automatic key guard, key code, uh, welcome note. You can configure certain services and actions, things of that nature. Since I was not able to test the SMS, so when I got um, Signal, the one and first and only time that I did, I tested with a phone call and it sounded pretty well. And after that, it kind of went away, so I couldn't test a lot of the messaging function, but it's very like one-to-one -one messaging. It is not anything that is, you know, super amazing. As you see, T9 is able to be enabled on this device. Also on the Nokia 105, that's a little bit of an update for that device. If you hold this key, the pound key, you'll be able to use the T9, which is pretty accurate. Again, it's not, you know, the best that you will ever use, but it is accurate enough that you will be able to use it. Um, so you'll be able to delete words and add words to your dictionary, you know, change them, uh, whatever it is that you are uh, looking for. So there you go. So you'll be able to add words to the dictionary as well if you want to use them more frequently. So I think the device is very good for those of you who are looking for a simple device that gets the job done. Um, there are other things that I wish that I would have been able to test, like the connectivity and how strong it is and battery life. Uh, with connectivity, without connectivity, it's been lasting forever. So I've been using this for the past week and a half, I believe and it is still at about 70%. So it's going to last for a long time, and that is virtue of the 2G, uh, not necessarily because it doesn't have 4G LTE, it's not going to draw uh, the battery, it's not going to drain it fast. It does have an internet browser. If you're using it in Europe, again, you'll get some of those things. You have the alarm clock, very similar to all of the other devices, but I really, really enjoyed using this device. It's been actually very good, and I'm excited for the future. So. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments below and I'll be interacting with you guys. Thank you for listening and for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.